If you have a vision, he should be able to carry you towards what you see because he's the legs, the feet, the arms, the body, the heart, the backbone. It's dark because of sin, and it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could we be using God as the magic? She is timeless. The plug that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. today so you already know what time it is it is time to call the roll and i need all of my beautiful baby mamas my b a b y m a m a this goes out to um i need all y'all to the front of the class it's time to read aloud The most unprotected woman, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. All right, so today's content is going to be centered around the black woman as the head of the household. Now, for most of us who are already checking that box on our tax returns, this is not about to be a whole lot of news. However, I'm hoping that we as black women can begin to build a community consensus of how we are going to move forward with the reality of where we are today. There's really no reason to continue to hope, dream, wish, pray, and fantasize about an alternate reality that doesn't exist. You know, a place where we are going to get the help, resources, assistance, and respect that we desperately need to do this job as mothers, as single mother, head of the household. For lack of being able to bring a steak in the house, they won't come. I can get my own damn steak. Nikki. I need you. I want to go about creating some solutions for the issues that we're facing as single mother head of households in the black community by doing a few things. I want to first go ahead and take a look at these statistics and get these numbers looking right so that we can have at least an accurate picture of what we're actually dealing with. We're also going to take a look at some very patriarchal, misogynistic ways that we've been raised up in, conditioned and groomed as women to accept as being normal when these views no longer equip us to do the job that we're faced with as we're moving towards preparing the next generation for what we at this point should have enough wisdom to be able to anticipate. 
I'm hoping that by deconstructing one argument and building a new one for the future, we can actually begin to agree on some ways to move forward that are going to function better for the black race and community in 2022 than the torch that has been passed to us in previous generations. As I've said previous times on this channel, 2022 is going to be a year that is going to firmly establish the predominance of black women. We're going to have to begin to open our minds up too in order to open our hands and embrace it. We have stood at the very most back of the line for several generations and we are at a time when the last shall be first. It just doesn't look like we're set up to win but I'm telling you this is going to end up being the time that we do some awesome, amazing things that are going to propel not just us as black women, but black children into a place of prominence. Black women deal with not just racial wealth gap issues, but also gender pay gap issues. So if we are truly going to check that box as the head of the household in the black community, we're going to have to begin to understand what these things mean economically, psychologically, emotionally, physically for the future of the black community. So according to the 2020 census, about 65% of black households are headed by a single woman compared to about a 36% single motherhood rate amongst white women. Now, if you look at these numbers right off the top, you're gonna notice something right away that black women are almost twice as likely to be a single mother compared to white women. However, if you interpret that particular data with the wrong intention, you're gonna miss the point. On a national level, single white motherhood represents 42% of households in America compared to 24% of single mother households in America on a national level being headed by black women. So there's twice as many white single mothers as there are black single mothers. The issue comes in on a community level, which is that we are being made single mothers on a much higher rate and basis than other races, ethnicities, and culture. Now, 52% of black men are going to remain unmarried their whole entire lifetime. This is a value system. And as I'm always saying to you, you have to interpret data correctly because data is not facts. You're able to make an argument based off of any set of data if you're not using critical thinking and you have a bias or skewed way of looking at the information, then you can make any set of numbers fit whatever agenda that you have. And you should be careful of that here in this country because we get a lot of information coming to us saying, trust the science, trust this, these are what the numbers say. But you have to have someone who's unbiased showing you those numbers. Otherwise, they can interpret any information to say what they want it to say. How many times have you been told, Black women, that you are a burden on the American system because you are a single mother, despite the fact that every other race of woman in this country represents a higher percentage of single mothers? When you break it down to the number, to the millions, of households that have a single mother in them, you are a very small fraction. But like I said, when you take this information and break it down to a community level, our community is in shambles. And we're being told that we need to be accountable, that we need to be responsible for this, that we're not going to be protected, we're not going to be provided for until we submit to the most unmarried group of men. Like, it's not that these men aren't marrying you. That's what you were told. These men don't marry. That's just what they do. And what they're also not telling you is that the fastest group of women who are being made single mothers at the highest rate currently are not black women. Because let's be honest, this is a black issue. The majority of black women who are single mothers were made single mothers by black men. 
And as their access to women of other races becomes more pervasive, we're seeing this particular trend climb in other races of women. So we're we're not going to make this in we're not going to make this a black woman versus black man energy because black women, I'm gonna be honest with you, we're being stretched in so many different areas that this is just energy we don't have time to dispel. We're going to have to really get in here on ground zero level with other women and children and figure out how we're going to protect, provide for, and build our community. We just don't have energy to play the politics of dancing, politics of dancing. with our men. It's toxic. It's draining. I mean, aren't you tired of going around and around and around over the issue of your value when you know every day what you put in, when you know that we're taking care of the children and the elders of our community without the help and assistance of our men? So here's another fun statistic. For those of you that just need the science, that need the proof in order to believe the truth that you already see around you every day, only one third of single black mothers receive child support. So for everyone who's talking about these baby mamas digging into everybody's pocket, only one third of single mothers receive child support. And the average amount of child support payments are, you ready? $248 per month for a child. Now, when the SSI death benefit <laughs> is higher than the amount of child support that you're receiving for your child, you got to understand at this point, black men, that she letting you live. Like you're worth more to your child dead than you are alive. I mean, she could have put that head out. You could have been touched by now. So if she letting you walk around and live because the SSI death benefit is $255 and all she getting in child support is $248. So just remember that when you have all these discussions about how these women finessing, how they getting a bag off of you, it, the numbers just don't support that. You, like I said, you have to actually interpret the data. You can't just let people give you these numbers that they pull out the sky. We as black women can't afford to look at it on a national level or to look at it on an individual level. We are going to have to collectively come together and create a solution, something that we can all agree to. And if it's not going to be holding our men accountable, if we're going to be male identified and, and talk about what a great job two of them are doing, then we're going to actually have to embrace those of us who don't have one of those two good black men and see how we can help black women and black children so that we don't continue to stand like we have for many generations, decades, centuries at this point at the back of the line. It's collective economics, collective politics, collective community building that makes a change in pushing policies forward in this country and creating a better quality of life for us all. You cannot deny or fight the power of a collective group of people unified in what goal they want to accomplish. And we've seen them kill off one person and completely dismantle a movement. So clearly, clearly, it's about the collective and it always has been. So here's how I feel like we got here. I feel like we got to this place of misunderstanding through a very misogynistic patriarchal system of social, religious, economic powers that have conditioned women from the time of their childhood to live like they're going to be protected and provided for. But the reality of that, it, it hasn't manifested after generations and generations of generations of Big Mama's house. 
There are so many factors that come in and keep this from being a reality for black women that have nothing to do with your desirability because I don't care what they tell you. Black men love black women. That's not the narrative that's being pushed out here right now. But you are the come up woman. You are the fallback woman. You're the one that they got to get on platforms and tell to submit and that you don't cook and that you don't. Why are they so obsessed with what you're doing in your home if they're not there? Why are they so obsessed with what you're doing, with how much hair weave you wear and why? Why do they even care? Like this year in 2022, I'm wishing, praying, hoping and using all of my feminine energy that I possibly possess to manifest white women for every black man that wants one. If I could, I'd give you two. If I could, I'd, I'd, I'd be like the Oprah of white women and give every black man that wants one. Hispanic women, age women, take your pick, please. Like Candy Crush, just, I'd give them all to you if I could. I really would. If it would keep you from sitting on platforms saying toxic, feminine, degenerate things about black women, we just don't need it. We just don't need that coming off your spirit. I am a person who knows from being unplugged, unbothered and completely unleashed that when you put that much energy out into the atmosphere it is coming back to you in the same form that you put it out and all of the ways that some of our men have been out here just screaming from the rafters about our lack of desirability it's coming back on them like lately, there a lot of them are the topic of conversations about how undesirable it is to be with a black man. How you're going to become a baby mama if you if you take up with a black man. So it's like a boomerang. All that energy you put out, it comes right back around, and it don't hit you in the forehead where you can see it coming. It hits you in the back of the head, like that. Like this is the trajectory of all the hate you give. You know, at this point, I can't tell the difference between some of our black men and white supremacists. Except the misogyny, except that they're taking out all of their anger and vitriol at the women, because I guess there's nowhere else for it to go. You know, they can't take it out on white women and still get in their beds and they not going to take that smoke to the white men. No, 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 no. The days of Malcolm X actually talking that big talk to the man are over. They would they want too much to be like them to condemn them. But this is the great belief that I was raised on since I was a young, 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 young girl that during my time off the grid, I was able to challenge it. But I have come back with a perspective that I think is actually going to help remedy this generation long problem. Okay, so if you're like me, you were raised up in church. I was raised up Jehovah's Witness, so you know the Kingdom Hall is not church, buddy. It's it's real patriarchal. It's it's mega misogynistic over there. Okay, you got to cover your hair, wear skirts and turtlenecks and stuff. It's wild. It's it's like being Mormon, but with no chance of going to heaven. Like. Okay, I'm not going to talk about them no more because they'll be at my house knocking on the door at two in the afternoon on a Saturday. Like, I don't need that smoke. So, all my life I've been told that the man is the head. He's the head. He's the head. At the head of man is woman and at the head of man is God. Now, for some odd reason, men still expect to be your head even without a head, even without having God at their head. But let's just take all of that out of the scenario. So when you hear a woman or feminine energy be characterized in the Bible, it's always characterized as wisdom, as intuition, the fruits of the spirit. You know, cities are often called women. They'll say God is within her, meaning a city. So this collective consciousness and spirituality is always characterized as being feminine, right? So... When I think about the spirit, vision, when I think about intuition, compassion, 
I'm constantly thinking about this part here of your body. You know, we as women perceive things. And almost everything on your body is perceived through your head, through your ears, your eyes, your smell, your taste. This is where your sensations come from. I mean, you feel with your hands and your body parts, but the majority of the information that you use to determine how you're going to interact with the world come through these four senses that are right within your head. Not to mention the fact, as I said in my last video, women have both sides of their brain hemisphere connected electrically. Whereas for men, their brain fires up one side and then the other side. But a man is not able to use both hemispheres of his brain simultaneously because of testosterone washing that occurs in utero. So women literally speak and process information quicker than men do. All right, and I'm going somewhere with this, so don't let me lose you, okay? They tell you to protect your head at all costs. If anything should happen to your brain, it's going to affect every other organ in your body okay so if you're in a fight or something like that the first thing you want to do is protect your head here like this okay so if the woman is the weaker sex and a man is called to protect her what parts of your body protect the most vulnerable parts of your body right so i was told all my life i was the body that i was a man's backbone that he had all the vision for the household and, and controlled everything. But how can someone who's slower perceptively than me be endowed as the one who is the head? Is the one who should be protected? I'm the weaker sex. I'm the one that's supposed to be protected. Well, what do we protect with? We protect with arms. We protect with our legs. That's how we defend ourselves. You know, I would like to submit that the woman is actually the head. Like the actual spiritual head. Whenever we talk about wisdom, having eyes to see what's coming in the horizon, being able to use experience from the past, apply it to new knowledge and information, meld those things together and create a solution that requires wisdom. Wisdom is simply experience and knowledge combined. It's literally left brain, right brain combined. This is the function of a woman. And a man is the strength. Where's your strength? Your strength is in your arms. It's not in your head. You're not juggernaut. Nobody runs around here tearing down walls with their head. They tear them down with their arms, with their feet. That's what you protect yourself with. So I think men are the body. They're the ones that take the information that comes down from the brain, the vision that the brain gives them and reacts to that. They carry the head along. They carry the body. They support the, the body supports the head. The same way that a man should support his woman. If you have a vision, he should be able to carry you towards what you see because he's the legs, the feet, the arms, the body, the heart, the backbone. And you know, these Nilgrams, he the penis, he the, he the, he the organ. He, he's the peen. He's the organs. He want all that body stuff anyway. So I really think that our Judeo-Christian patriarchal views have caused us to interpret our role in the family incorrectly. We're going to have to get to a point as women where we accept our headship. Because I'm sorry, if you've ever been in a fight, even before people will protect their ribs and their body, they will protect their head. And this is the reason why we see that when men are attacked, there are all these women coming to defend them, coming to protect them, just like this. But if I were to tell you, you were the head and he wasn't. 
what would you use your body to do then? We're not going to be able to use body. We're not going to be able to be a shield for these men. And from the way that they think, we're going to have to be the brain, the mastermind. What are we doing today? Taking over the world like we always do, Pinky. We're going to have to be the brain. We're going to have to be the central nervous system of this community. Or else we are going to completely fail our people and the generations that have come before us that moved us along. They took all the body shots. They took all of the fire hoses and dogs being sicked on them. And now we got to play a smarter, strategic game, black women. I have to talk to y'all. You're the ones that are here. You're the ones that showed up. You're in the church pews. You're in the voting booths. You're the ones that are taking commissary to your men that are locked up. You're 65% of the head of this community, which is interesting when you consider that that's about the same percentage of women that were participating in the Black Panther Party in the 60s. It's you. It's always been you. It's always been you. That's been responsible for moving this community along and feeding kids and making political and economic changes. That's why you're the ones getting the degrees at the highest rate. That's the reason why you are the largest number of new small business owners. It's always been you. And all I'm asking you to do is what you've always done, which is use your head, not your legs, ladies. Because when you put all this body out anyway, they're telling you they don't want it. They're telling you you can't keep them with all this body. So I just need you to use your head now. And it's time for us to put all of these patriarchal views that that men are the protector and the provider. We just got to put that behind us for this season. I promise you they'll need us. It's like that movie Hancock. <laughs> I promise you that when we start focusing in on our business, being upwardly mobile, doing what it is that we're supposed to do, taking care of our children without needing a man, without folding to this submission that they're asking for right now. They'll need us. And I'm not telling you not to submit to your man if you have one who has claimed you and is taking care of you. By all means, you submit one to another. Submission is a part of dominion. The two cannot rule in dominion. See, I'm talking about dominion without submission and cooperation. But when you meet a man that can run your family, your kingdom, like you can, you're going to submit to him naturally. He won't even have to ask. Because he's going to come with his guns and ships and resources and soldiers. And you're going to come with yours. And he's not, he's not going to ask you to put them down because he's not going to be intimidated by you. He runs his own kingdom. He's not going to ask you to relinquish your kingdom. This is how submission works. Submission means I have, okay, I'm a king. I'm a man. I have 500,000 soldiers. I've got 20,000 ships in my Navy. And I've got... 50,000 tanks. I'm just giving you an example of some numbers. So I will lend my tanks, ships, and soldiers to protect your kingdom should war come against you because you have 300,000 soldiers, 50,000 ships, and 20,000 tanks to lend to me should I go to war, we're going to create an alliance with each other. That is dominion. You have my kingdom at your behest, and I have your kingdom at mine. 
That's what submission is. It benefits me more to be in league with you than it does to be at war with you. You're a stronger ally because you're too formidable as an enemy. If he's not telling you that, if he want war with you instead of peace, if he want to play with you, if he need two more extra women that's coming with nothing, that's bringing nothing to the table other than that body they say they don't want. Well, now you got to ask yourself the question, is this about dominion or is this an ego game? So all I'm asking is that from now until 2025, that my women will stay focused. Now, if a king appears, baby, and he bringing his chariots and horses and stuff with him, by all means, kiss the ring, okay? By all means. But we stay in focus. We stay in focus on each other, on mentoring children. I need to see a whole lot more women coming to help with schoolwork. I mean, because single moms, they have a hard time. So some of these single women that don't have children, if you can come in and begin to help your sisters out, like this, the, this is the BAM challenge, but it's like the BWAM challenge, like whatever. This is, this is the BAM challenge, but for women. Some of my single women that don't have children start to help these single moms because these same little boys could end up being the husbands of a daughter that you may someday have. You know, these same little girls could end up growing up and being a doctor that can take care of you when you get older. So we really need to invest back into our communities. We want black therapists and black professionals and to be able to go to black businesses. Well, we're going to have to invest in a black infrastructure and a black community and black children. We just going to have to do that. So that's what I'm asking my black women, my baby mamas. You know, I have a good friend, Kate, she's Kay Jala, Kay Jala on Facebook that does meals and does food and I support her however I can. We, we have a child swap from times and it's all about just supporting. And for us, it's all about just supporting each other as single moms. I got tons of single mom friends that will tell you how much I'm down. I don't preach or promote anything that I'm not living. And they will tell you how much I'm down for supporting them and building businesses. So I'm not just talking to talk. And when I speak about how we need to move forward, I'm building a community and watching these things that I say work. So if you're feeling what I'm saying and you team baby mama, you about building this community up and getting us on a track that we actually want to live in in the future, go ahead and drop that headphones emoji in the comments. So as always, I ask that you like this video. Go ahead and hit that like button. A lot of y'all come in here and watch, but you don't like nothing. I don't care if you dislike the video. Just give me some help with these analytics, okay? Your engagement, positive or negative, it doesn't even matter to me at this point. Just engage with me. Leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe and share that link. And for my wireless women, please unplug. Remain unbothered and watch, you'll be unleashed. But until the next episode, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki. Class is now dismissed. See you in the next one.